Now, this is the second part of pleomorphic adenoma of the parotid. In the first part, I have mentioned what, what is the word meaning of benign and the pleomorphic adenoma is the commonest benign condition affecting the parotid glands. And I have mentioned the common complaint of the patient, the examination part of the doctor and what are the important necessary investigations. In this second part, I will tell you about the management. When we have come to a diagnosis of pleomorphic adenoma, the treatment is going to be surgery. So that means the, parotid, uh, the pleomorphic adenoma affects the parotid gland more often and that means the parotid gland has to be removed. So the parotid gland, it has got two parts. It has got a superficial part and a deep part. Suppose the superficial part is uh, involved, we have to do a superficial parotidectomy and suppose the deep part is already uh, is, uh, that is also involved, then we have to do total conservative parotidectomy. That means the facial nerve has to be left intact. So I have just mentioned that surgery, we have to remove the parotid whatsoever, whatever type. Now when we have decided the surgery has to be done and suppose the surgery is on Tuesday morning, Monday you will be admitted and first we will take a concern from you. The, in that hospital concern paper, it will be written what is the diagnosis, what is the surgery we are going to do and what are the complications of the surgery. So let me tell you about the complication surgery. The complications of surgery are the place where we have uh, operated, it can get infected, the wound may get infected or the wound at uh, that particular day of surgery or the subsequent day, we can we may have a blood collection, hematoma formation. Third, this uh, the facial nerve may be injured. So what happens? That particular side of the face will not be working because facial nerve supplies the muscles of the face. So you will not be able to raise your eyebrows, close your eyes properly, uh, whistle or uh, blow your mouth, eat properly, smile normally. So these are the normal functions of the facial nerve. Now, uh, the, from the wound, there will be small saliva discharge, which is called as a salivary fistula. And sometimes the flap can lose its blood supply and it can turn black in color and it will lead to necrosis. There is a condition called Frey syndrome, which means that when uh, the wound has healed properly, say about a week or so, whenever the person or the patient sits to eat, there will be the, the, the wound area, there will be a little sweating. That is what is meant termed as Friar syndrome. These are the complications of the surgery. Now, this is all related to the parotidectomy. Now, when the consent has been signed and uh, by you and there is a witness along with you, they also should sign and the doctor there on duty, he also will sign. And when that is done, by the meantime, all the investigations could have already been done. With this investigation paper, you have to meet a physician, he will examine you and he will tell you whether you are fit for surgery or not. And with this fitness physician clearance, you have to meet the anesthetist who will examine you. With that, all of the necessary uh, documentation workup has been done. So, uh, suppose the operation is on Tuesday morning, Monday night from midnight 12 o'clock, you are supposed to be nil per orally. You should not drink or eat anything unless told otherwise. Now, Next day morning is the surgery and the surgery duration for a parotidectomy is we, superficial parotidectomy will be, be less than 2 hours, say 1 to 1 and a half hours. So all together in the theatre it takes about 2 hours. So if and uh, when you come back to your room or ward, for the next 4 hours after surgery, you are sub, not supposed to eat or drink, nil per orally for next 4 hours. Meantime, IV fluids will be going on, the staff duty will be checking your heart rate, oxygen saturation, blood pressure and temperature periodically and she will check for the facial low whether the face is symmetrical or not, whether the swelling, the area of the operation site, the swelling, is there any swelling or not, whether it is increasing or not. Meanwhile, IV antibiotics and painkillers will be going on and that particular day, uh, after 4 hours, you can start drinking first, then you can take fluids that particular day. The next day morning, the big uh, bandage which was there that will be removed and it will be, we will apply only a small bandage. And most of the surgeons we would like to discharge the subsequent day or maximum maybe you will stay one day more. During discharge, we will give an advice like you have to take a full course of antibiotic and painkillers for maybe two or three days and after that if you have pain you can take otherwise no need. And the wound dressing has to be done every three days and you have to come back 
after 7 days so that we can have a look at the wound and remove the sutures if it is healthy and we can give it the biopsy report too. Suppose the wound is not that healthy and sutures is not time for removal, maybe maximum another 2 days more, we will call you after 2 days to remove the sutures. Not only that, at home you have to drink lot of water and walk normally, do not be sit, please do not be restrain yourself, you can do your normal activities, take balanced diet, avoid very hot or cold drinks and uh, try to drink drought of water and if there is a minimal soaking of the wound, please do not be worried about that, that is okay, that is expected. Now not only that, in that wound area, there will be a slight tightness, you will feel a tightness that is going to be there for a few months maybe. And some of them they may complain that when they turn their head, they have tightness, that is also expected. But a small advice that after surgery, so at least for 2 to 3 weeks, do not overextend your neck to the left or right or, or upwards, at least for 2 to 3 weeks. And some of them post operatively, they complain that there is a slight change of voice, slight dry cough or irritation in the throat, that is common, that is because of the endotracheal tube and that it usually goes off within 4 to 5 days. So now when you have discharge after surgery, there are few complaints which are very important, alarming complaints which in that case you have to call, ring up your doctor and you should go and meet him. So what are these alarming complaints? One, fever for which you do not have any other, other complaints, no nasal block, no nasal discharge, no headache, no body pain but you feel the fever, maybe it is related to the operation, fever, high fever. Two, there is a severe pain in the wound or the wound swelling is increasing there is a swelling which is increasing or you feel in that particular area where we have operated there is a pin being pricked if that sensation is there continuously or you have severe pain in that area where we have operated whenever you turn to any direction. And the last that your face, one side of the face is not working, means you are not able to close your eyes properly and you are not able to smile if there is a symmetry. If any of these complaints are there, please do not wait for the next day for the appointment date you have to ring up your doctor immediately and you should go and meet him. These are the alarming signs. So this is all about pleomorphic adenoma. Thank you so much.